Hey guys, Bullhorn Betty. You guys haven't seen me on TikTok in a while. I just dropped a video about Daniela Mendiola and her story. This is a sad story. She's 17 years old. She was at her boyfriend's house without her mom's permission and she had called a friend to come pick her up and take her home. And while she was waiting outside for her ride, uh, a gentleman by the name of Joshua Brown, which uh, from what we're learning has a relationship with this man right here, which is the Liberty prior Liberty chief police. And it sounds like this man here uh, happens to be family to Joshua Brown. This is the man that was driving in excess. Um, upon looking into his social media, it sounds like he has a propensity for speed, uh, uh, driving his vehicle in excess of 150 miles an hour. This right here is the uh, vehicle he was driving. It has the illegal tent on the windshield. This is about where um, Daniela hit the vehicle because the vehicle ran completely off the road. And this is about the spot in the driveway where she um, was hit by the car, sending her over a hundred feet away to this area here where she was ultimately found. The one thing about this particular case I think that bothers everybody so much is that she suffered in that ditch for 43 minutes when Joshua Brown left the scene of the accident, went around the corner, which he only lived six minutes away from where he killed her, and he did not return back to the scene of the crime for over 20 minutes. He was never the one that called 911. From what we're learning is that there was a report that somebody from inside the law enforcement uh, body is the one that dispatched the call out there to this hit and run. And we're wondering if it had anything to do with the affiliation of the prior Liberty uh, police chief. Her family is suffering. Her mother this is the first time her mother went out to the scene. I can tell you the entire family is absolutely, utterly devastated uh, by this crime. Uh, they're missing their loved one. This gentleman is also on social media. Again, Joshua Brown, 38 years old, um, is seen making um, gummies, uh, THC gummies, and other we hear of other substances being involved in his life as well. So we have speed and substance, yet law enforcement did not test his blood the night of this accident. When everybody arrived to the scene, they were told that this was um, a, a DUI, a homis, you know, crim, um, a DUI automobile death, okay? And then something changed, and we believe when he went back and brought his family back, they were well aware of his affiliation with the Liberty uh, Police Department and the state troopers ended up driving this man home. Again, no tests of his blood was done, even though um, he has a history of substance abuse as well as excessive speed in his vehicle. And now a 17 year old a child lied in a ditch for over 43 minutes suffering from meeting his car and he drove off and left her there to die. So this is a very heartfelt case. I just dropped a video. I hope all of you guys go out there and check out the video. I really don't do a whole lot of videos um, on this platform anymore. Um, and of course, I just wanted to let you guys know that her family is suffering. We need to seek justice. I'm not sh quite sure how we are going to do that for this beautiful girl, um, but she didn't deserve to go out the way she did. And she darn sure didn't deserve to be lying in a ditch suffering for 43 minutes while a man went home and did God knows what, cleaned out God knows what. But what we did find out is when he came back to the scene, he started kicking her phone off the road. That's tampering with evidence. And they've only charged him, and they didn't charge him with lying to police. They said that she was in the middle of the road. But if you see out there, there's no reason for her to be in the middle of the road. There's nothing there. It's in the middle of nowhere. So, and you could clearly see where she was struck, and we could clearly hear from a local and neighbor 
um, ring doorbell camera at the exact time uh, the car collided with her. This is a very sad case. I don't even think that she knew what happened to her when it happened because we do have the audio and we didn't even hear her scream. And I have a feeling that her back was turned when this happened. Um, in situations like this, I always wish that, you know, they don't suffer. But in this case, she did. And this man was driving in excess. He exited the roadway over a, an entire lane into the grass. He collided with her and drove off and didn't come back for over 20 minutes. He could have attempted to save her life or provided life, um, um, you know, life-saving um, methods, and he didn't. So just a very sad case. Where is he now? This is the problem, Marie. They didn't even want to charge him. Olivia had to go out with the family and protest before they finally took this case seriously and charged the man. The problem is they hardly have any evidence because they didn't pick any evidence. They didn't do anything that they were supposed to do. They didn't mark the road. They didn't do their measurements. And he lied to police and tampered with evidence. He went to jail for a hit and run and illegal tent not lying to law enforcement, not tampering with evidence, um, not vehicular homicide for uh, him, his substance abuse or whatever he was on. They don't have evidence that he was on anything because they failed to send him to the hospital to take blood work in a casualty. In an automobile casualty, it's usually standard operating procedures for a blood draw to be taken, especially in this day and age where it's no longer just alcohol that causes impairment. It's pharmaceuticals. It's other substances. And this guy was clearly impaired, according to the witnesses on the scene that described him with his eyes being bloodshot and other things, glassy, what have you. So what was he doing? What was he on? We may never know those details. And right now, all the reports have a lot of different stuff. So I don't want to bore you guys with the details. I will be bringing out some more videos. But I, I noticed that, uh, you know, because I don't post videos very much, that people probably don't know that I posted a video about her and thought I would just take a few minutes to come on here and let you guys know. This is Daniela Mendiola, and she deserves to be here right now but she's not. So we're going to be trying to do a call of action, call to action. I'm not sure what uh, we're planning on doing, uh, but I do think that we need to do an email or letter campaign to the district attorney's office to help uh, this family seek justice for their daughter, because this could have been any of us. This could have been any one of my subscribers and, and viewers, child, uh, or grandchild. So we definitely want to know. Uh, Cunning, she was uh, she was um, standing on the side of the road, well, in a driveway in a rural area of North Carolina, Graham, North Carolina. And um, this man right here plowed into her in excess of 65 miles an hour. But the problem is, is he's well known uh, to have substance abuse issues, predominantly THC, but other substances as well that we've learned. Um, he's He was making gummies. In North Carolina, THC is still illegal in that uh, state. So it's it's one of these things where he should have been tested, but we feel that because of his affiliation with um, the prior chief of police that maybe they didn't follow the proper protocol when dealing with him. And it's caused a lot of problems, especially from our knowledge of the criminal justice system and how they process these cases in a court of law. You know, when you don't have evidence and, and, and law enforcement drops the ball, such as not uh, getting uh, blood work done to find out what substances he could have been on at the time of this uh, collision, it's going to cause problems. Moreover, the reports all have different times, different times of arrival, and they don't make sense, which is a breeding ground for a defense attorney to really challenge these things. So I think that they deliberately made these mistakes as a, as a uh, loophole for the defense attorney later down the road. But we will see. She needs justice, and that's the point of this. So if you guys would like to see me, I'm going to go on to YouTube. Um, Olivia and mom right now are shopping for shoes, so I thought I'd take the time. Time, um, to come here and just chat with you guys. Say, hey, I hope everybody's doing well. And hopefully you guys will, um, excuse me, hopefully you guys will um, uh, meet me over on YouTube. So God bless each and every one of you. Rock it out with your coffee beans out and we will be back 
real soon. Please check out that video. God bless.